Hey everybody, welcome back to another industrial design sketching video. And as you can see, I have a new video setup, so now you can see me from here, but also from here or from here, maybe here and here. All right, so let's get started with drawing. And this time around, we're talking about shadows and it's a little bit harder to lay all these out and I'll try to keep it as short as possible and as entertaining as possible. Just stick with me and hopefully you'll like it. Today I'm going to talk about shadows and how to construct that. And for that, let's start with a light source that I'm going to put here. And that light source is going to be a certain distance from the ground, which I'm calling this one. So this is our distance. And then let's see on this ground, let me, let me put in a horizon line just in the background so we have sort of an idea. I'm going to put sticks. I'm going to put a stick here. I'm going to put a stick here. I'm going to put a stick here. So this line shines in all directions, right? So how are we finding the shadows for these sticks? It's actually very easy. We draw a line from the point where the light is just above our surface. And this will be called shadow direction. And it has to touch the bottom of our stick. So this is the shadow direction. And now from the light source, we draw a line that touches the top of the stick. And this will be our light direction. So which means this will be the shadow for our stick. Once more, shadow direction, and this will be the light direction. And this will be the shadow for this stick. And then the same thing here again will be this. Yeah. So this will be once again shadow direction and light direction. What does this mean? Well, it means that obviously light emanates in many different sources. So we're going to have these different shadows. But in product design, we like to have one constant light source. So what I'm going to do to make things easier for ourselves, I'm going to set up a light direction and a shadow direction by myself. So this will be my light source. This would be my light direction and this will be my shadow direction. And from here on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to elements in my drawing, in my sketch that I want to be lit. So I'm going to start with a, with a stick again. So this will be my stick. I just draw a parallel lines. So basically I construct this shadow direction from this point, from the bottom of my stick, which is this. And I construct the light direction touching the top of my stick, which is this. And this way I applied this lighting condition to this stick. Let me do a couple of more examples. So there we go. We apply the same uh, lighting direction to different sizes of sticks. Let's apply the same technique to boxes. So I'm going to draw a 3D cube. All right. So I'm going to put my light source, my shadow direction and light direction, all right? So this will be light direction, shadow direction. Now we take the shadow direction and apply it to the bottom. So basically these are our sticks, right? One, two, three, four sticks. And we don't have to use the stick that is closest to the light in this case, but we're using the shadow direction in this stick, then on this one, then on this one. And now we use the light direction on the top of the stick. And now, once again, where the shadow direction and the light direction intersect in these points, that's where the shadow ends. So we're just going to connect these lines. There we go. That's our constructed shadow. This is how you construct a simple shadow. Now, let me show you the same method for uh, cylinders and also cones. All right, we have our cylinder and now same thing, light source, the shadow direction, light direction. So how does it work here? Our stick is the exact interior axis of the cylinder. So shadow direction comes from the bottom of the axis. Let me draw that parallel line. And then from the top, we go with the light direction that will go like this. And this is where the stick ends. So the shadow of the stick will end there. But here we have to construct this, well, this circle again. 
So don't forget, when we have a cylinder, right, very simple there, we always take, that's why we always construct it nicely, not like I did it here, because we need this axis. And from this one, basically we can do the projection and then reconstruct the cylinder from the top goes down there. And what do we do for uh, cones? Well, same thing pretty much. I'm gonna start with the axis this time. Okay, using the same light source. This will be our shadow direction, SD. Light direction is this. So this is where our shadow ends. And this time we don't have to construct the upper part from the cylinder, we just have to close it off. And now I'm gonna draw a more difficult object. All right, as I said, these you don't always have to put onto, onto the page. You can also just start with one and then keep that in mind, but to keep it easy here, I'm gonna put it on a page. So this time around, we're gonna have several sticks. Keep that, well, technically we have one long stick, but we have to subdivide it. So let's start with our shadow direction. Where the stick in the center and parallel, and this will be our shadow direction. Light direction, now what we have to do, that's why I said that we have several sticks, we have to take each of these elements one by one to construct it. So we have the shadow direction and the light direction touches the upper part of this cylinder. So light direction would be this. Now once again, the light direction touches the upper part of our, well, conical cylinder, I would say it's called, there. Then we have another one here, there, and then we have the top of the cone. Yes. So what I said before, from this point, technically we have to reconstruct this upper ellipse. Yeah. And then here we reconstruct this one. So let me also show it with an arrow. Okay, there, then once again, this one comes here, would be pretty much close to what we had before and make sure that you construct that you don't tilt it you don't move it you copy the same exact ellipse so this would be a more tricky put together shadow so make sure that you understand that this comes here this one comes there and that one comes there and Putting all of these together, we will get the shadow. Now let me do some castovers as well. So this is our stick. I'm going to choose for a shadow direction in this, which means, there we go. From here we bring it down and then continue. And then the light direction should be this. Right, and then we know this is going to be the shadow of our stick. This would be the shadow for our box, but then our stick comes a little bit further out. This is the zone with which the stick's shadow is a little bit longer. It, push, it, it, it pushes it away with that much. All right, so let's do the same thing with the cylinder again. I'm gonna choose this for a shadow direction. Let's say light direction is a little bit longer, this. Which means our shadow for the box, at least, is this. And now we do the same thing for here. This time, see what I said before, is that we have to project this inner stick down until it touches. So here it would touch the ground. From here I need my shadow direction, which is this. And then now I do the light direction, touching the upper point. And then here I have to reconstruct this cylinder again. It's also, it's a good, it's, it's helpful if you could reconstruct your cylinder on the bottom as well, because then you know what lines to unite. There you go. And from here, you just come up with a line to there. And here also that intersection point, you come up with a line and there. So this is in shadow. This is in shadow. Obviously I should have drawn this in much bigger. Let me redraw this. All right. Now to draw the shadows. I'm choosing shadow direction this, and I'm just gonna apply it to all the bottom edges of the box. And I'm choosing light direction, semi-long one, 
this one yes there we go we're going to bring this dot we have to bring down there so bring it all the way to the edge down there now we know the distance and just all the way back and here i'm going to reconstruct that ellipse we take the shadow direction and we take the light direction so basically in this point we reconstruct this ellipse now I know where to connect the outer lines, right? Go there, from here it comes up. And from this point I know I have to connect that line again. And this comes up basically on the edge. So I can connect to the edge. And now we know how the shadow falls and we can easily... Oh, that wasn't... Really not easy drawing when you have to stick to one position because of the camera. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. All right, once again, I would say take a look at Scott Robertson's book because he really can go much in detail. I've, I'm afraid this video is already too long, but I hope you understand the basics of how to construct shadows. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that like button and maybe also subscribe. Uh, and also consider following me on uh, Instagram. I upload there quite often. If you have anything to add or any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like what I do and want to support me, maybe think about buying me a coffee. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.